Hey, here we go. It's uh, great for me to be back here. Um, yeah, I know they announced yesterday was my birthday. I had a great day yesterday. I had the biggest frickin' steak we could find in Coper last night. And it was really, really good. And uh, so I appreciate that. Um, basketball is a very interesting game. I mean, you have, uh, over, obviously over in Europe, soccer is, real, we call it soccer, you call it football, whatever, is really a big sport. In the States, football is really a big sport. Um, football coaches don't share much in, in the United States. I mean, they kind of think uh, whatever we have is mine, our, mine. I'm not going to share it much. Basketball coaches, we share everything. I think that's the beauty of basketball. You know, and there's, there's so many ways to play the game. You know, press, not press, half court, zone, man. And there's no, there's no really wrong way to play it. There's no wrong way to play it. But I think what you have to do is decide with your team what, how you're going to play. How you're going to play with your team. And then you have to sell your players. Your players have to buy into what you believe is going to be the right way to do it. You can have every, every type of drill, every type of defense or offense, and if your players don't buy into what you do, you're not going to be very successful. So your, your players have to buy into what you think is the best way to play. And I think once you accomplish that, you're going to be pretty successful. Uh, just because they have faith in what you're doing. So I think that's the first thing. They've got to buy into what you're going to play. I think there's four areas of coaching that you have to be concerned about. And we just saw a really a good presentation uh, on the pick and roll and defend the pick and roll. Uh, but there's four areas of coaching you need to be concerned with. First one is tactical, tactics. How are you going to defend a pick and roll? Uh, you know, the, the, that's tactics. Your scouting reports, uh, how are you going to play your 2-3 zone, uh, how are you going to play it against a good shooter, those are tactics. So you're here to improve your tactical skills as a coach. I mean, we just, you just probably improved it a little bit from the last session. Second way is technical. As a coach, you've got to be concerned, be an expert in the technical part of the game of basketball. This, I call this skill development. The, the, the technical way is skill development, all right? Uh, you know, which pivot foot do you like to have uh, uh, when you catch the ball? Uh, how you release the ball in a shot? What do you do when you catch the ball? You come in triple threat position. Uh, you know, all the skill development things. So you kind of have to have, uh, be a little bit of an expert uh, and know what you like in the skill development. The third way is relational. Relational. And when I talk about relation, it's a relationship you have with your players. Not that your players have to like you, but they certainly have to understand why you're doing things and respect why you're doing things. So you have to have some kind of relationship with your players. And for us, and this might be different, I don't know what it is in, in this part of the, country, uh, the, the world, but for us, we really have to, with, with USA Basketball as well as my own high school team, we have to spend some time with the players when we're off the court. So we can't always just be coach on the court. We've got to spend some time with our players off the court so they see us as a, you know, just a regular person. You know, we're, we're, we're regular people. And I think the relational part, then I think they respond to you better on the court. So you have to have that relational relationship built a little bit with your players. That's really important. It's important for us with USA Basketball as well. I think the fourth thing then you have to have as a coach, kind of be an expert in as a coach, is organization. Got to be, got to be a pretty good organization, uh, old coach. Meaning, uh, you know, have your, have a practice plan ready. Don't just come and uh, here we're going to, we're going to do this today, and not have the organization part to it ready. Scouting report. Uh, you know, how are we going to play this team? Um, those kind of things are organizational things. So I think those are the four really main areas you as a coach. And I, I try to improve in that every year. I try to get better at, at those four areas. Tactical, technical, 
which I call skill development, relational, which is the relationship between you and the players, and then organization. How am I going to be better organized with what I want to do? So I think that's really four, four key things for you as a coach to keep in mind. I, I had some questions uh, yesterday. Hey, first of all, you know, being the last speaker of a clinic sometimes is a challenge. Uh, but, you know, you're all here because you want to win a Sony whatever it is. What, what, are they, what are they winning? TV? No. A what? Tablet. Sony tablet. So, so don't, don't fool me. I know why you're here to the end. So what I'm going to do is, what time does the game start this afternoon? 5 o'clock? So, so I can go to 5 o'clock and you guys will still all be here. Because I'm not going to pick out the coupon until I get done, I don't think. So I, I got you. Uh, so that's, that's not a bad, way, a bad way to do it, and I appreciate that because uh, now you have to stick around. Um, okay, some of the things, I had some, question, I had some questions from coaches. I, I got some emails yesterday, and I'll, if you email me, I will send out the information on the, on the press within the next week. I had some questions either in email or uh, yesterday about the press, press so I want to cover that real quick today so give me give me the 10 guys up here let's go who's on the ball joey joey's on the ball you know first of all i'm not i'm not sure i trust anybody that's got a headband over his ears is that is that i mean uh, sometimes i'm not sure about that it's almost uh i'm not sure he can, he can hear me or he wants to hear me but we, we might have a problem with that if he was, he was my player. Can you hear me? Oh, you can. All right. Okay. Hey, you look good with that headband, though. Okay. Hey, first, one of the questions was, what, what are some techniques you use for, for trapping? Okay, balls inbounds right here. What we try and do, uh, this guy cuts off the sideline. What, what, kind of what type of press are we in? Or, or what? 23. Very good. Uh, uh, Ruben? Doug, Billy, Joey, Michael. You're the smartest guy out here too, Michael, by the way. Not the best looking one, but the smartest one, okay? Okay, so you're going to cut off the sideline. So we're, that's, it, that's his responsibility. And we talked about this yesterday. If he gets by the sideline right here, I mean, this, this puts everybody in terrible situations. So probably what sound are you going to hear? Eh, yeah. Get him out. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's end him out of the ball about right here. So you're taking off the side. Now your job, Joy, was to do what? You're in the trap, and wh where do you want? We don't want him. To, Joey is responsible so he doesn't split the trap. So if I put it, we can't have this happen right here. You know, then both of you are going to be out, all right? So that, that's really important. So our trapping situation is cut off the sideline, and what we do on this is we just tell our players to make a banana cut, a banana cut to set the screen, or set the, uh, to set the trap. So we're coming from this angle right here, hands up, locking the trap. Okay? So a lot of our traps are made from what we call a banana cut to the, to the ball because that's really important for us. Uh, so a couple other, couple other uh, uh, questions. Personnel-wise, in the, in the press, this is, the, this is my best guy. I mean, he's probably the most important person in the press. Most important guy in the press. And, and we'll have anywhere, we might have our four-man, we might have our three-man. I like him a little bit taller so he has some, so he can uh, distract the guy out with, with the ball out of bounds. Okay. So that, this is really, to me, our most important because when the ball goes through the basket and the goal, he's got to follow the ball right here and he's right here with the hands, hands up. We, we shade a little bit. If he's right-handed, we like to shade a little bit to the shoulder of his, uh, of his strong, strong hand. Okay, so he's really important. Billy back there, he's, he's, he's generally my center but we may trade him around a little bit with these two. These two can interchange a little bit. So if we have a trap set up right here, 
Doug takes the pass straight down. Ruben, let's say we're in a squeeze right here. You come to the middle. He, he breaks to the middle. Okay, Billy, you can say you got him. You can take the middle right here. Well, the pass we like to let go, if we're going to have anything like pass go in situations, either the pass back or the long pass across, because then we can recover. Those are two best passes that we like to have. Straight down is not a good pass for us. Okay, take it out again. Okay, that, that answers a couple questions I had on that. Uh, some coaching points on the press. Uh, I had one email ask, what are, what are your main coaching points on the press? And I maybe failed to do this yesterday. First one is deflections. I think any defense, deflections are huge. We chart deflections. We like to get five deflections per quarter. That's 20 deflections per game. That's pretty good. Uh, number two, ball pressure is crucial. If we're going to press, we want ball pressure. Number three, be patient because, you know, the press will work if you're patient with it. It's going to disrupt the offense. You can't just say, all right, you gave up one easy shot, we're going to get out of it because you got them playing the way you want to play because of your press. Uh, number th number th uh, four, stay with it. You know, just stay with your press, different 23, 22, 21 uh, presses. Stay with it because in the end, it's going to be uh, be very beneficial for you. Number five, don't set good traps and don't reach. So we have a trap right here. We're not going to steal the ball from the trap. We're going to steal the ball when it comes, the ball comes out of the trap. So our hands are up, and we're not going to bail this guy out. We have a perfect situation here on defense. We're not going to bail the other team out by reaching and, and hacking and getting a foul. So we're going to try and get the hands up, and we're going to steal the ball out of the trap, not in the trap. You never steal a ball in the trap. You steal the ball out of the trap. Uh, number six, hand, we say hands up, hands off. Hands up, hands off. Very simple for our kids to remember. Hands up, hands off when, when we have uh, trapping defenses. And then sprint out of the trap. Sprint out of the trap. That doesn't mean just turn and jog. You sprint out of the trap. We, we had a drill yesterday on that. And what we like to do, we tell our players to square up your shoulders in the direction you're going. So if you're going to sprint out of the trap, let's say here, pass back, we go into our rotation, balls pass back, we sprint out, we have the shoulders to the direction we're running. We don't try and run with our shoulders this way. We turn and run with our shoulders squared away. That's how you sprint. Um, and then number eight is look to tip from behind. We always try and look to tip from behind. Uh, number nine, have an awareness. Have an awareness. So Billy back there, you know, he, he's pretty smart. Are you pretty smart, Billy? Is that a yes? Okay. So he's having, he kind of has an awareness of what's going on back there. And what I mean by awareness is, you know, he's kind of looking, all right, I can, if this is a long pass down, I can get to that. Uh, the, but there's a guy in the middle, so I got to be aware of what's going on there too. So you got to be having awareness. The players of the court have to have an awareness of what's going on. Uh, we use that term a lot, uh, having awareness. One of the things in, in the, in the press, we anticipate and awareness are two A, a words that we use. Anticipate the next pass, have an awareness. I, I, it's really interesting because co I, think, I think we sometimes we just overcoach the game. Uh, does that make sense? I mean, so, sometimes I tell my players, I, I'm not going to coach you every play. Just figure it out. Sometimes you have to, as a player, you have to figure it out. Because you're going to get into a situation, you know, pretty soon, well, what if this pass is made here? What if this pass, you know what? Figure it out. And, and players can do, we, give, we don't give our players enough credit sometimes because most times they can, they can figure it out on the floor because they're the ones playing. Uh, what's it? Number nine was awareness. And the last one, you, I think anytime you, you want to take the other team out of their comfort zone, and that's a big term for us. Take the other team out of their comfort zone. You know, whatever their comfort zone is, you know, you take them out of that. Maybe it's with a press. Maybe it's with, 
with a zone defense, whatever you like, but you can't let the offense get in a comfort zone. Get them out of their comfort zone, and you're going to be much more successful on that. Okay? Uh, all right, now let's go. Let's go to uh, you guys come off the court. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a th what we do just to develop. It's not an offense. It's just to develop your offensive uh, work. And I think it's really, for us, it's really been good. Um, hey, I didn't say sit down. Billy, you did a nice job. You didn't sit down, did you? Good job, Billy. Rest of you up here, just on the baseline. And I asked two I needed 12, 12 players, so two coaches are going to help us out on this. And I'm not going to be really hard on them because they're making a sacrifice here to help us out. So uh, the two coaches, that way we have 12 players. Um, there's, there's three things about an offense. And as, I, as you think about three things, the three things that I want to see in an offense, I don't care if you run flex, ball screen offense, uh, high-low post offense. Well, it, it really doesn't make any difference, but there's three things I think that are common to any offense that you need to teach. The, the first one is when you catch the ball, be a threat. When you catch the ball, be a threat. You know, if I have – did I – what's your name? Yeah. Diage. Huh? David, hey, there we go. David's going to pass me the ball. Uh, every time I catch it, no matter where I'm at on the court, I've got to be a threat with it. If, you can, if your players can do this, you've already accomplished quite a bit. You know, this, this is not a threat. All right, what can I do from here? What can, Billy, what can I do from here? Pass. I can't shoot it from here. I can't really dribble from here. If I'm playing against, against a good defender, what's that defender going to do? Come right up in me, right? Not going to be. So that's not really being a threat. All right? So if I catch a pass and I do it like this here, that's not really being a threat. I'm turning my back to the basket. I can't see the court. Okay? So what we teach our players is as soon as we catch the ball, we want to catch the ball in a position to shoot, pass, or dribble. So I want to get right here. I like to have this position right here as a threat. Now, understanding that sometimes the defense is right up in you and you can't do that, but at least you better make an attempt to do that. And we want our eyes, we tell our players, put your eyes on the bottom of the net. Because if I have my eyes on the bottom of the net, I can see everything on the court. Okay? So be a threat. Uh, too many players do this turn their back, you know, are not a threat, okay? So that, that's the first thing I think you need to teach offensively, whether you're running, no matter what kind of offense you have, okay? If you catch the ball in the post, uh, David has the ball out here. He passes me the ball in the post right here. What, what am I going to do to be a threat? Well, I'm going to chin the ball right away. That's my threat. I look over, we, we teach look over the baseline shoulder. Okay, so you're, you're already being a threat with your back to the basket. Or, if I pass here, you're left-handed. I pass the ball right here. He's being a threat. Now, you don't look like a player to me. Ah, now he looks like a player. So as I'm right here, he's looking like a player. That's a really good term to use. Because as soon as I said look like a player, you know, he understands that. He didn't have his lo knees locked up. Okay, so good job. So first one is be a threat. No matter where you catch it, be a threat. If you're coaching younger players or older players, you know, we have former NBA players that we have to teach that to. Okay? Second thing in an offense is movement. You've got to have some sort of movement, either ball movement or man movement. So, uh, Joy. Right here. So if I pass the ball to Joy, right here, and I just stand here, 
you know, I'm, I'm pretty easy to guard. I don't make anything happen offensive-wise. So I got a lot of options. I can go screen. I can pin down. Coming off my pin down, uh, I, can go set a, I can go set a ball screen right here. Uh, I may, what I may do, too, in your offense, you may go and then come right back and catch the ball here. But you're moving to get it and come back. So movement is really important. So the second thing is movement in an offense. Third thing that's important is being a great teammate. That's, that's, that's an underrated thing in, in an offense. So, you know, if, I, if Joy passes me the basketball right here and I shoot and score, I better turn and I'm going to thank that. I'm going to thank Joy for passing me the basketball. You know, I watched the game last night, um, and, and Italy and uh, uh, Ukraine were playing. And, and there were some really good teammates on the court. You could tell that after the pass. It, it made the game, as a spectator, fun to watch, but it also showed that these guys like to play with each other. So I think it's really important you acknowledge your teammates during the course of a uh, during the course of a game. So three things in offense. Be a threat. It means catch and score up. Uh, secondly, movement takes place. And thirdly, be a great teammate. If you can be those three things, if you can have an offense that includes those three things, you've accomplished a lot. Okay? Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you a little bit how we implement this into our practice sessions. I don't care if you're coaching 12-year-olds, 20-year-olds. We do it with our USA basketball team. Uh, Coach K does it with his NBA players. It's a great situation learning type of ex experience with this. So I need to have one, two, three, four. You four guys go red jerseys, all right? And you're going to be right here. One, two, three, four. Line up in a line. I need uh, one, two, three, four black jerseys behind them. Behind them. Okay? And then you take your jersey off. Billy, you take your jersey off. You'll be T-shirts. All right, so we generally do this out of four on four. Uh, the game, this is called cutthroat. And it's a very high intense uh, game where we're teaching what we want taught on offense. So the three rules that we have. So the red team is out here, and, and we'll, we're going to start you with, you have to come out with two guards and two wings. So out here and here. So the three rules, every time you catch the ball, players, you got to catch and square up to the basket, look like a player, okay? So if I pass the ball right here, he's got to catch, square up, look like a player. He passes the ball somewhere else, catch, look like a player, okay? If, he does, if you do this, if I catch it here and, and put it on the floor right away, it's not the rule. you got to catch and square up first, okay? Now, the second rule is, once you make a pass, you have to move. So, what's your name? Josh? Josh? Yeah. Good. Josh is going to pass to Joy. He's got to move. So he's got to have some, he can basket cut, make a basket cut, and then you could fill. Or, you could go here and screen away. Come here, screen. Or, you could go set a ball screen. Okay? But you just can't stand right here. Okay? So Joy has it right here. He makes a pass out here. What are you going to do, Joy? Going to cut the basket. What are you going to do? Look like a what? Look like a what? Player, right? Look like a player, yeah. Pass it. Now what are you going to do? All right, you can screen. Or, you know what? You might go down and screen Joy in a pin down right here. Come on, okay? So you got a lot of options. You're teaching your players how to play. 
You're not given, all right, you go to this spot, this spot, this spot. Teach your players how to play. Third rule is, third rule is, if, what's your name? Reuben. If Reuben goes to the basket, makes a cut to the basket, and I pass in the basketball, and he scores a layup, he's got to turn and thank me right away. Point and thank me. Point. Say thank you. There you go. And it's got to be loud enough so everybody can hear it. Because, because, see, I want the guy who made the pass, Doug right here, I want his mom in the stands to know that we appreciate what Doug was doing. Does that make sense? Do you get, you get parents coming to your games? Do you, you get parents that are obnoxious? We, I mean, we do. I don't know if it's so. Yes? No? You're, okay. I was, you're, the coupons aren't, we're not going to draw for coupons yet. So you, you're here for the duration. All right? So I want his mom in the stands to be really proud of him. That way she thinks that, you know, Coach, you're doing a hell of a job because everybody knows who made that pass. All right? So we make a pass right here. He scores a layup. Okay, that's too slow. So as soon as you make it, you better turn and thank the guy who, who made it, all right? Okay, so those are our three rules, three offensive rules. Now, we're not gonna, I'm not going to cover the defensive part to it because that's just, you're, just gonna, you're trying to stop the play, all right? So now, I, this, what's the game called? I tell you, what's, the, what's this gate four on four game called? Where's my smart guy? There. Hell, you weren't even listening. What are the three? What, what, give me one rule. Oh, my God. Hey, they don't, do they get a chance for coupons? No. So you, you don't get a chance for coupons. What's, what's, Billy, what's one rule? What is one rule for the game, offensive-wise? Huh? Move after the pass. What's another rule? Huh? Look like a player. What's another rule? Thank the passer on a score. We'll get it down. Okay. All right, so and what's the game called? Joey. See, pl players don't focus on what you're saying. So you, you, this, so you have to really uh, kind of ask them some questions during practice. they, they got to give you feedback. If you, all you do is re regurgitate some information to them, they're not picking up much of it. The game is called cutthroat. Did you hear that? Cutthroat. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we have, I, I, I'm out front, and, the, and the, the coach you have out front, he, he's, he's called the cutthroat God. So if one of these things isn't done, so if, I, if you have the ball and you don't square up, I'm going to blow the whistle, and your team is off the court. So you've got to do those three rules, okay? Black team's on defense first. So you're coming out garden player. If you're too slow coming out, I'm going to throw you off the court, and the next group comes on. Okay? So you've got to be quick coming on the court. All right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to show it, demonstrate a little bit, and then we're going to add a few things to it. Uh, if, you would, if you would watch our, our, our 12-year-olds at our school, we do this a ton. And... Then I go watch uh, the college players do it, and, and they have the same, sometimes they have the same problems as a 12-year-old uh, doing it with the offense. So uh, I think it takes some work and practice. All right, here we go, boys. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. you guys are too slow. You get out of here. Next group in. Ready? Here we go.
Not bad. Okay, now, the object is to try and score. Did I forget that? You're trying to score a basket? Doug, did you understand that? You did, okay. So you're, you're actually trying to score a basket on this. So if you score a basket, you get one point. All right? And then you stay on offense. The new team in is always on defense. The new team in is always on defense. Okay, ready? Hey, why don't we have, why don't you be on this team and you be on it? Yes, we have the, there we go. All right. Okay, here we go. Good screens, that's it. No basket! What'd you forget to do? Get out of here! Your team is off! No basket. Here we go. So defense goes to offense. Here we go. Didn't square up. You're out. Give me the ball. Here we go. All right. Now, see, as a coach, now you can kind of start teaching uh, how you, what your culture is. So did you notice? Ah, I, keep free, I just call you smart one. What's your first name again? Huh? Michael. Do you notice what Michael just handed me the basketball and walked off the court? I mean, is, if that's what you want in your, in, in your culture on the court, that's fine. But what I would do is I'd blow a whistle and say, your team's got minus one point because you walked off the court. Put your head down. So, you can, so now you can develop what culture you would like in this. You ready? You're on defense, right? Here we go. Oh, defense, you're out of here because you're not aggressive enough. Get out of here. Here we go. Ball. Tip. All right, that's it. That's it. Keep moving. A little bit quicker. There we go. You chinned it. Good. Cut. Move. Black, get out of here. That's terrible offense. Just, it's just bad offense. Here we go. Switch it. You're out. Didn't square up. Here we go. Ball in. Too slow. You're out. Next group in. Here we go. Ball in. Good. Right here. Out. Ball in. Off Billy. You're out. Get out of here. Here we go. Attack the basket a little bit. We're trying to score. Movement. Good movement. Okay. Now. What's your first name? That's all right. Hey, everybody takes bad shots. That was a bad shot. Okay? Was it a bad shot? Would you agree with me? Oh, was that a bad shot by him? Was, do you think that was a bad shot? Yeah. Your teammates think that was a bad shot. Okay? Why was that a bad shot? Because we'd like to have you take shots where you can make them. Okay? That's all right. This is what we're doing to learn it. Ready? Here we go. Good. Out. Right here, Billy. Right here, Billy. Ball in. Good. Good. That's it. That's it. Out. Didn't square up. You're out. Get out. There we go. Now, when you come on the court, call out your score, your team score. So it's either one, zero, whatever it is. Okay? 
Call out the score when you come on. Ready? Here we go. Didn't square up, you're out. Right here, ball in. Didn't move after the pass, you're out. Did not move after the pass, you're out. Ball in. Didn't square up, you put it on the floor right away, you're out. There we go, point. That's it. And he said it loud enough so his mom in the stands could hear. That's even better. And you have a girlfriend? I can understand why. So we don't have to do that. Okay? Here we go. So call out your voice. Here we go. Out. Okay, now. Okay, now. Just to change this up a little bit. So you, you kind of have the idea of what we're, tr we're doing. We're trying to teach catch and be a threat. Movement after the pass. And right now it's just kind of random movement. But you know what? That's okay. And then the third thing is be a great teammate. Okay, now, well, now we're going to start with... Uh, down with the, with down screens, okay. So I have the ball out here. We're going to down screen here, down screen here, and then we'll start to play. So now you can start to add some things that you do offensively, specifically into the game. All right. So we're going to start with down screens. Ready? Good defense. Right here, Billy. Right here. Down screen, down screen. Good. Move. Good. That's it. Out. Billy, too many dribbles, right? All in. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, play it. Didn't square up. You're out, Joy. Get out of here. Joy, I didn't really like your attitude on that. So minus one for your team. So you had one, you're back to zero. Joy didn't show very good attitude on that. All right. Good. Right here. Down screen, down screen, down screen. Go again, down screen again. Good flash. Didn't thank the passer. No. Now, not according to the cutthroat God, you didn't. His mom didn't hear it. His mom's got to hear it. Eh? Here we go. Out. Okay. Now, now let's start. Let's do this to, to have a set. We have to start out of a, let's say our offense is a flex. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with a, I'm going to start with a down screen on one side. If they switch it, that's fine. We'll get it. You're in the post over here. Move down. So this is, this is how we're going to start. So we're going to start with a down screen right here. Pop out. You're going to set a screen. Here he comes. Here comes what we call the, fl the our flex screen. So we're coming right over the top with it, right here. And now we're playing. I love what the what the Italian coach said yesterday, several times. Is that you know he gives he gives a 
set or a basketball play position, and then, and then they play out of that. So I think that's what you have to teach your players. You got to just give them a set and have them play out of that. So we're going to play out of this flex cut. Okay? If, I, if I pass on this side, if I pass on this side right here, set the screen, you wait for the screen, here, I'll pass here. Now you're coming off. No, you're coming off that. Stay in there. Back down the baseline. You're coming off this. Stay there. Stay there. You're coming off his screen. Okay, right here on a flex cut. Okay, and then you're playing out of that. All right, here we go. So every group coming in starts that way. We're playing out of that. Ready? Here we go. Square up. Good. Nice. Ah, Billy's, Billy's trying to stuff a little bit. Get that out of here. All right. Got to have fun at that. Good job. Screen down. Screen down. Good. There you go. That's it. Good movement. Bad shot. Good movement. Right here. It's all right. Here we go. Next group on. Down screen. Down screen. Stay right there. Square up. Good. You're out. Didn't move after the pass anyway, Joy. Right here. Down screen. Set a pick. Set a pick. Set a pick. Good. There we go. There we go. Good job. See it? Hey, we're so always, you know, we're starting to build a little camaraderie, a little bit of, a uh, little bit of teamwork, a little bit of being great teammates on the team. So that's good. So now, now you can put anything into it you want to. So you work on your offense in the game of cutthroat. We run a a ball screen offense. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to have a guard out here. Doesn't matter. Right here. Down the post. One post player. We're going to enter the ball at either wings. And this goes right into our, what our offense is. So let's say we enter it right here. Once you pass the ball, you got to move. Cut away. Now you're going to set a ball screen. Set a ball screen. There you go. Now you're going to play off a ball screen. I'm not going to get into the technicalities of ball screen, but now you're going to play out of it. So this goes right in with our offense. Okay. One of the things, one of the things you need on the ball screen offense, if you're not in the ball screen, stay away from it. So let's say we make a pass here. Cut. Stay away from it. There you go. Now you're coming into the ball screen. Now you can work on this side and then come in. That's a, just a great rule to remember if you're not in the ball screen. Just stay away from it. Okay? So we're always going to start out, pass the ball to the wing. The post is going to set a ball screen on, on the first pass. Okay? Ready? Here we go. Out. Right here. All in. Hustle. Let's go. Let's go. Ball off run. Right there. Didn't square up. You're out. Didn't square up. Right, right here. Ball out front. Let's go defense. Oh, had a wide open. That was a dunk for you, Bill. That was a dunk for you. Move, move. Didn't square up. You're out. This is not squaring up. Get out. Ball in. Good. Who passed you the ball? Who passed you the No, to start with. I did. You got to turn and thank me. 
There. All right. That's not got quite loud enough. So no basket. You got to thank me. Ready? Here we go. All in. That's it. There we go. That's it. Even if it ha even if it's on a rebound, I would turn and thank somebody. Thank the shooter for missing it because you got the rebound. Ready? Here we go. Good. Right here. Ball in. Black out. Good one. Right here. Switch it. Out red. Okay. Ball. Okay. Any 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 questions so far? Okay. You guys are doing a great job with this, and and we're teaching exactly what we want taught out of this four on four cutthroat game. Exactly what we want taught. We're teaching being a great teammate, catching squaring movement and then you can put in your sets with it okay so now let's do let's have let's have our uh, when you come out we need a, a high post two wings and then a guy out here so now we can enter at the high post here might have a back door cut okay or we enter right here you can slide over here or set a what we call a UCLA cut so you're going to cut right off this right off this here looking for a pass okay so so you're setting a screen and then after he screens you can set a, a ball screen okay so now we're just learning learning to play out of a high post set so here's a high post set we're learning how to play out of there we go didn't square up you're out get out of here ball thank you here we go let's go black get out of here let's go Good. That's it. Keep playing. Good boy, Joey. Oh. We'll let that be counted this time. A little late. We'll let that be counted. Good move. Here we go. Good, good. Good ball screen. There you go. Hold up. Out here. Ball out. Here we go. Here we go. Good. Good cuts. Here we go. Out. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to kill the two coaches. <laughs> Good job, guys. Any questions? Wow. Okay. Well, a lot of times we do. <laughs> if, it's a, if it's a bad shot, I get an offensive rebound. Yeah. Thank you for missing that shot. And that that's a you know that's a good point because. Guys, like, you know, if you're around a basket, you're anticipating every shot to be missed if you're going to be a good rebounder. I mean, that's just, that's just how you think, your thought process. Every shot's a missed shot because you're going to get the rebound. Okay? Any others? You, now, you <clears throat> understand how you can put your offense into this cutthroat game as well. So now you have your three main rules plus your cut, plus your, uh, situation where you have you can put a flex cut into it you can put your ball screen stuff into it so you can really teach a lot of things out of that cutthroat game but you're still three main rules are really important catch and score out movement and then uh, uh, thank the passer okay now do I get 10 minutes yet 10 that's good okay 
How is, are you doing this? How are you doing this on that screen? Is that is this working on the screen? It is? Okay. All right, now bring it out here. I'm going to show you how we play defensive cutthroat. So everybody come out here at the, at the top. And you can put, you may, you know, put your own rules in for defensive cutthroat as well. But the first, you want to stay on, you want to stay on defense. The only way you can score is get a stop. So defensive cutthroat is you want to, you, you, sco you stop, get a rebound, and then you get, you get the score and you stay on defense. So you want to get three, three stops. Okay. Offense, we're not, I'm, I'm not, I have a coach underneath the basket that will guide the offense through, but you're doing the same, basically the same thing. Okay. Now here's the three things, three things that we have on, that are defensive cutthroat. The ball cannot be dribbled to the paint area with both, and both feet land in the paint area. That's something we just can't have. Because once you have this, your defense really breaks down. Second thing on defense is if you have the basketball here and I give up the baseline drive. So I give up the baseline drive and we don't have any help. That's, that's a non-negotiable. Okay, so paint. So defense, now you really got it. You're keeping the ball out of the paint. So if he gets the ball to the paint right here with both feet, I blow the whistle, defense is out, offense goes to defense, new defense in. Then the third thing, of course, is offense rebounding. You got, got a blocks out. So those three things defensively is what we are stressing on a daily basis. So you pick out what's important to you in your program important, and what's important to you in your, in your team. So Black takes it right here. Red's on defense. Black team's on offense, one, two, three, four. You're trying to score same way, but keep in mind, if you get to, to the paint area, offense, with both feet in the paint, I blow the whistle, offense is out, defense goes on defense. Or if you drive baseline and get to the basket, you're out or get a second shot, okay? So defense, you want to stay on defense to get a point. You get three stops, three points, then you go. Ready? Here we go. That's it. That's it. Good. Okay. Black team is out. You guys stay. You got one. Next team in. So you stay on defense. Right here. Ready? Got to dribble it in the lane. There you go. Good. Defense gets the point. Offense out. Two. One more. Come on now, offense. Get that ball to the paint here. You get him out of there. Or baseline drive or offensive rebound. Oh, almost had it. Three points. Okay. Now, the, you guys right here. You go over on the side, because you won. Everybody except the two coaches down on the baseline. Everybody except the two coaches down on the baseline. And, and you guys lost that, right? So there's got to be a penalty for losing. I mean, uh, you know, we have too many, we have too many, too many things going on where they say, oh, everybody gets a trophy and there's no winners and losers and that's bull crap. You know, we keep score. There's a winner and a loser. So you guys got to clap for your teammates while they got to do, we're going to run down and back, okay? But you got to clap for your teammates while they're doing that. If you don't clap, then you're going to run. Joy, do you hear that? Okay. Ready? Go. No, you don't. No, not the coaches. You can if you want. That's it. Clap louder. There we go. All right. Okay. Good job. Okay. Again, this is. I mean, this is part of building team camaraderie, team unity. Uh, you know, they have to know they're standing up for that 
their teammates. Even though they won, they're still cheering their teammates on. So this is, we do this every time there's, there's a penalty for losing. And yes, we keep score. That's what it is. Any, any quick questions? Hey, put my, put my email. Some of you asked for a card yesterday. Put my email up there. So if you want to email me, uh, look on the screen. He'll put it up there for you. I, I ran out of cards yesterday. Uh, but again, I, I really appreciate the fact that uh, uh, it's the other way. Show what, yeah, there you go. Don't put, get those J's out of there. You guys use J's all the time. Okay. Now, hey, you guys come out here. Hey, give the, give the two coaches a big round of applause. Nice job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, players come out here. Players come out. You got to make a circle. We'll, we'll, we usually do it around the center circle. We'll do it right here. Grab hands. Grab hands. Okay. Here's how we end up our practices. We call our communication circle. And one of the things we're trying to do is build communication with our players. So we're going to start out with uh, Michael. Michael, you have to tell, what's your first name? Josh. You got to tell Josh what, one thing he, that you really liked about his game today. Today. No, not yesterday. Just today. Okay. Now, now what you have to do is you got you say you got to call him by his first name, and you got to look at him. Your, your first name or? My first, Josh. Yeah. Okay. So look, look at him. No, no. You look at Josh. There you go. And now you tell him what what you thought he did well today. There's got to be something he did well. You what? Attack the pick. Attack the pick. Okay. Attack the pick. Great job of rebounding. That's all right. Say in Serbian or Slovenian. Okay, he took a shot. Yes, he did. I'm not sure that was good, but he took a shot. All right. Good job, Joey. I liked your offensive rebounding. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He, he's not done yet. You got to look at him. Look him in the eye. There we go. All right. Okay. David, he likes his defense. You guys all didn't play very good defense. I'm telling you that right now. Very good. Billy played really hard under the rim. Really good offense. Played really smart. Okay. Good job. So that's, give him a hand on that. Okay. Okay, so just, just to finish up, you know, that was out of their comfort zone. That was not in their comfort zone. So now you're getting your players out of their comfort zone a little bit because they don't, communication is you have, one of the things that we do on communication is stress is you look the player in the eye and you tell them the truth. You know, so you notice a few of them, if, I, if I'm here, we're going, uh, Joe, you did a really good job of rebounding today. You know, they don't look each other in the eye. That's, all, that's hard for players to do, for kids to do. So you've got to learn to look them in the eye and just say, hey, you did a great job of uh, boxing out today. Okay. And after a while, they get used to it, and, and they, it's, not in their comfort, it's not out of their comfort zone anymore. So now all of a sudden you're teaching them how to communicate with each other, uh, and this carries over to on the court. Uh, we'll, we'll switch this up every day. So like, like the next day, we might have, have, have them tell the person beside you, uh, what's, you got to tell what's one thing that you need to do better, you personally. So as we're right here, say Coach Showalter. Showalter. Just Coach Show. Look at me. Need to do better what? Just one thing. All right. Good. I got to do better. So now 
what you're doing is he's, he's identifying one of his weak areas, and he's telling his teammate, you know, I've got to get better at this weak area. So now we're trying to, we're developing some trust that goes along with that. Okay, then, then we might say one day is, uh, come here, Joy. Now you've got to tell the person something that nobody else would know about you. So you tell me something nobody else would know about you. Look, about you. Look me in the eye. Something that's, re, you know, that maybe nobody else would know. Uh, there you go. He wears his lucky socks every game. Do you wash them between games? Okay. Wears his lucky socks between games. All right. Uh, we did this with our USA team, and you know, we found out that one, one of our players loved jazz. Uh, we found out one player uh, is a math genius. We find, so now what this does, it develops trust with each other. So now we're trusting each other. We're telling them some things that may, nobody else knows about me, but now we kind of open up and make that a, a trust factor. So that's kind of the way we end up practice every day. So get, hey, give these guys a hand. Did a great job. Okay. Yeah. Now give give somebody a high five or fist. Give somebody else a high five or fist. Tell them good job. All right. Okay. Any quick questions? All right. The coupons are you got your coupon out. So somebody's gonna win that. I think it was a fit it looked to me like it was a fifty six inch Sony TV. H D. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, again, I appreciate being here. I, I love to, to speak at clinics. Uh, your attention was fantastic, and I hope I gave you something at least to think about uh, in, developing, in developing your team. Thank you.